This is Tom Blair with Inside Colorado Wrestling doing another episode of Boundary to Boundary, Colorado High School Wrestling. Uh, today's guest is uh, from Canyon City, uh, Jeremy Gilkison. Did I pronounce that right? That's right, yep. Okay, That's how are you doing, good. Coach? Doing well, man. Um, I know you're here for a clinic at uh, Colorado School of Mines. Uh, how's that been going so far? You know, this morning has been fantastic. Obviously, uh, the two gentlemen here, Coach Smith and uh, Coach Brantz, are pretty impressive individuals, and it's a it's an honor to listen to them talk. And yeah, it's it's pretty awesome. Okay, uh, what I've seen, they've been uh, hitting on some pretty pretty good stuff. Oh yeah, it it's uh, it, it's neat to hear them talk about things that I, I believe as a staff we're working for, and it, it's cool to hear them kind of throw out some new ideas that. Uh, on things that we've been that we're doing, and it's like, oh shoot, I haven't thought about that. And uh, yeah, it's it, it's good. And, you know, I'm sitting there with my computer, taking a bunch of notes, and I can't wait to go back and put it into a form for the rest of my coaches to see and you know implement that stuff. Okay. Um, why don't you introduce yourself to the wrestling community uh, with your wrestling background and your career, uh, and then we can go into your coaching career and your career at Canyon City. Okay, cool, yeah. So uh, I'm from Canyon City, uh, coach for, or uh, wrestle for uh, Duff Sini, uh, which is, <clears throat> was a true blessing to have him as my head coach. Um, we've had a great career there. Uh, went on to wrestle for UNC for three years, and then uh, started my coaching career at Northland High School with Brian Hufford. Um, great opportunity there. And then uh, my first head coaching job was at the Academy, which is a uh, charter school over in Westminster. Um, was there for three years, and uh, my wife got into an anesthesia program, and we, we did some traveling around. Uh, coach in San Antonio, coached out in Hawaii, and then we moved to Kansas. And uh, how was uh, coaching? I, not to stop you right yeah. there, but how was coaching in Hawaii? Was it uh, different than coaching here in, in Colorado? You know, uh, I think wrestling is wrestling wherever you show up. Um, but uh, I, I do think they're. Uh, I, it, it, being a six foot three, blonde haired, blue eyed Howley from uh, Colorado, I had to earn my stripes out in Hawaii, and um, it was really fun. My first, the first school I taught at, um, uh, they uh, they resonated with me being a wrestling coach, and uh, I, I earned some respect through that. And it was really cool. It was a neat experience. Um, I think uh, with it being on a, a smaller island, um, everybody knows everybody, and it's a close knit community just like everywhere else. So it was a it was, it was a neat experience. Um, but then from Hawaii, we moved to Kansas. Uh, we lived in Manhattan for five years. Um, I was a head wrestling coach for Omegle High School out there. Um, we did some awesome stuff out there, and it was a true blessing to, to have that opportunity. And uh, we had a little guy. Uh, started talking about having more, and uh, we decided to come back. Uh, started talking to Coach Sini about a, an opportunity to, to coach with him. And uh, I was so blessed that he brought me on and allowed uh, me to, to work with him for the last, uh, this, is, this is my fourth year at Canyon. Uh, so, so you uh, moved back to the hometown? Moved back to the hometown, yep, yep. Coach Sini uh, blessed me with, with, with uh, getting on board there. And uh, of course, I learned a lot from him uh, still. And uh, uh, then took over the program last year. And uh, I tell you, I got big, uh, big shoes to fill, uh, but uh, do my best. Um, what were your results from last year's team? Uh, we were 12th as a, as a team at the state tournament. We qualified five. Uh, we put two in the finals. Um, so overall, I'd say we had a heck of a year. I'd tell you the last couple years, we've had some very, we had a tough, some, uh, a tough team. And uh, so I think we're seeing that this year. We, we got some young kids this year. We're going to be a young team. Um, and we're, uh, we're really focused on, on the development of those, those kiddos. Are you doing any preseason uh uh, practices and stuff. Yeah, we have, we we are. Uh, in fact, last year we, we we started about eight weeks before season. 
Um, and this year we're going to start uh, probably six weeks out where we're re really going to get going. Um, I've done some work to the wrestling room, so the mats have been rolled up. Um, I just got those mats put back down yesterday, actually. And uh, so we've got some of our, our club kiddos that are going to be competing um, in the, the, the class, I think it's called, coming up. Um, so we've got some of our club kids that are going right now. Um, so it seems like, you know, you're always going at some capacity. Okay. Um... What's your returning team look like? Uh, as I mentioned earlier, we're going to be young. Um, we, we graduated, uh, uh, I think, seven or eight seniors last year. They were all uh, starters for us. Um, uh, four of the five qualifiers were seniors last year. So we're, we're, we're trying to reload. Um, we've got uh, Easy Ortega. He was a freshman qualifier for us last year. And uh, I'm going to be leaning on him to be one of our team leaders. Uh, we got Garrett McCaslin, who came on pretty strong at the end of the season. Um, so I'm going to be leaning on him as well to be another team leader for us. And uh, you know what's been fun is, is uh, to see them rise to, to those expectations. Okay. What do you have for uh, incoming freshmen? Uh, do you have a good uh, class uh, from either your club team or for your middle school? Sure, yeah. You know, this the, the, eight, the, the current freshmen, we, we've got smaller numbers of kids in, in the freshman group. I'm really looking forward to this eighth grade group to, to join our junior group um, uh, next year. I think we've got a, a, a good group of eighth graders right now. Um, half our club, half our, our kiddos that just you know participate at the middle school level, which is absolutely appropriate and fine. But uh, I think we got a good group. Uh, this year we went to Western State uh, camp over the summer, and uh, we, 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 took, uh, we took six uh, seventh graders with us. And... Um, you know they're they're which are now eighth graders and uh they just got the right attitude they uh they took their lumps you know they were young kids at, at, a, at a good camp and uh boy they don't like to lose but they were okay with with, with the learning process and trusting the process so uh, i think i'm looking forward to the, the here in a couple of years we're, we're you know we'll be all right it's always great to go to those team camps and get the kids to uh, bond together um getting towards uh, their uh, high school years? Uh, you know, I, uh, we're, we're, uh, our club coach is, is a fantastic uh, gentleman, uh, Chris Montoya. He's doing a really good job of, of building our young kids. And we had a discussion about maybe we should bring in uh, some talent to Canyon and maybe host a camp instead of taking the team camp. And, uh, you know, I, I'm torn on it. I think it's a really good deal. I think we're going to go for it and try and bring in because we are a young group. Uh, but te getting kids away from home, getting them together, forcing them uh, to, to bond uh, away from their, their families, I think it's, it's, it's priceless. I don't know you could put a price on it. And, uh, you know, it, uh, we have a family cabin in South Fork. And so what I did with my program in Kansas is I would bring them there for two or three nights, and then we'd go on to Western State for camp. And I did it this year, um, this summer. And, uh, you know, again, we had this group of really young kids, and then we had some juniors and seniors. And uh, I put them in my cabin, and you know that first couple hours, they didn't do a lot of talking or hanging out. And then all of a sudden, um, the phones went away, and they started becoming a, a team and a group. And, and then we get the campfires going and get the s'mores going. And uh, it's really neat to see them gel. And then you throw them out in competition, and then they have to go back to their dorm rooms with their teammates. Um, I, I, I think it's tough. Uh, for us to, to miss an opportunity like that, it's just, it's just so much uh, fan. It, it's, a, it's a very good thing to do for the team, and, and I love it every, every summer. I know I travel with the uh, team vision quest to, uh, to different tournaments and stuff, and when we go into hotels, we get smaller groups, but when you rent a house, uh, it seems like they bond more together uh, for those tournaments. Absolutely, and I think that same idea with the, with the cabin is they're right there, and you know, they're – they're 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 outside and they're, they're working together and um, so yeah I, I agree that's a good idea with that the the house. What's your coaching staff look like for this year? Um, we're going to stay consistent uh, as we were last year. We got uh, Coach uh, Eric Ortega. He's been on board for a long time. Him and I were uh, on the same uh, teams together throughout high school. Um, he was a state champion. 
uh, wrestled through college, and he's a great asset. Technically, he's uh, phenomenal. Um, we've got uh, Coach Tam Gerald. Um, I actually went to high school with him as well. He was uh, three years older than I am. Um, he was part of, again, a very tough group of wrestlers that we had during that time. And he's also, now he's, a, he's coaching middle school football. He coaches middle school wrestling. He's, uh, he's an asset to the entire program um, that I, I just can't replace. And um, we got uh, Coach Garrett Bunnell. Um, he graduated, he was a state finalist for Canyon uh, for Duff uh, a couple years ago. Um, he's a younger guy. He brings a good uh, young feel to things. Um, he's a big guy, and you can't put a price on having those big guys in the room. And uh, so uh, those are our, our main four. Um, coach Chris Montoya, our youth coach, uh, club coach, he pops in the room a bunch. And then we have alumni that pop in all the time um, that, that are coming in for workouts. So we got a good, good staff, and I'm, I'm so honored and lucky to have the staff that I do. It sounds like you got a whole bunch of uh, hometown boys. We do, yep. And that's, uh, you know, it, I think it's a magical thing. And it also goes with our, our staff at the high school. Um, I think, I don't, I'm throwing out numbers here, maybe 50 staff members, it's plus or minus that. But uh, I think we got about 40% of our staff members who are alumni of Canyon City High School. And uh, I, I don't know, I've never been anywhere else that, that has that type of uh, mentality and commitment to, uh, you know, coach has been talking Tiger style. And we are the Tigers, and it seems like that's what we have. We have a bunch of committed uh, individuals to Canyon City and uh, who believe in Canyon City. So it's, you know, Coach Cini, he had the right, I mean, he had the right thing. It, it, 30 years there, and I can see why he was there for so long because it's a great community and a great place. What's your season schedule look like? Uh, still putting together. I think the rest of us are all starting to get it figured out. Um, but, uh, you know, we've dropped a couple tournaments. Um, like I said, Coach Cini, gosh, he had a couple just solid teams that he and he had a, probably one of the most uh, rigorous schedules that he's probably ever had. And we stick with, we stuck with that schedule last year. Um, this year we're going to drop some of those. We're going we're to drop NCCT. I just don't think we're there right now. Uh, I'll pick him up back in a couple years. And uh, there's a few other tournaments we're looking into getting into. Um, we still have some of the old classics that we've had for since I've been there. Um, so it, it, it's a good, uh, well, well rounded schedule, I think. Um, we still go out to Garden City. Um, I can't break that tradition. And uh, so, yeah, I think it's a good schedule. And when I got a few more things to tweak, and we'll see how it goes. Basically, be, uh, breaking the schedule down to fit your uh, team's needs and in, in your quality of wrestlers. Yeah, you know, and I, it's something I'm having to get get accustomed to in Kansas. Um, we 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 didn't change our schedule very much. It was pretty straightforward. You rarely dropped a tournament. You rarely changed anything. We had our league duels, um, so our schedule was pretty consistent year after year. And uh, one thing I'm having to learn, uh, and uh, Coach Tyler Cini over at uh, Cheyenne Mountain, gosh, he's been a blessing to me. And you know, I, I, it seems like he's he's not afraid to change things up and really accommodate his team. And so I'm having to learn that it's okay to change things up. It's okay to go out and find something different. And uh, so it's been a unique experience from the last couple of years here. That's what a lot like uh, Coach Branch was saying, change things up. Yeah, yeah, change it up. You know, if it's not working and uh, do something different. And, uh, and you see your team getting complacent. And, you know, if you, you got to know your team. And if your team doesn't belong in some of these hammer tournaments, then don't take them. And uh, if you're taking a team that's, uh, then you do, or you are a bunch of hammers and you're beating up on people, you probably should change that up and, and give those kids competition. So it, it, I think it's neat how Colorado runs the deals and, and our ability to change our schedules. It's, it's, it's good. Well, what are your season's goal for such a young team? Um, you know, talk, listen to, to the coaches this morning, um, establishing a true philosophy for our team. Who are we? What are we about? Um, what are we going to live and die by? What, what does that mean? Um, getting our, our kids to buy into uh, exactly what the staff wants and, and, and preaching that. Um, and forcing the kids to, to work their butts off, which they do anyways. Um, and peaking at the right time. Uh, you know, we don't necessarily believe that we need to win everything. But we want to be prepared for regionals and state because at the end of the day, that's all we're worried about. And um, and I think uh, sometimes it's hard for for our kiddos to uh, to accept that. You know, I've got I mentioned Easy Ortega, 
Uh, man, that young man is tough on himself. He's tough on himself. And, and it, it could be the first match of the season and maybe it, it didn't go his way. And boy, he's beat up and he's telling me, oh, I can't believe this. And I'm like, oh, just chill out. So I think uh, focusing on peak at the right time and, and, uh, and things will fall into place for us. Well, I'd like to thank you for your time, uh, Coach Jeremy. Um, this is Inside Colorado Wrestling for Boundary to Boundary Colorado High School Wrestling. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it.